Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about CSS grids and uh, this is a function that is was released a while ago but actually now is supported in all browsers. So I think it's a good time to talk about it now and to actually figure out what you can do with the CSS grid and why you want to use this functionality. And in order to get an understanding of uh, what it is and where we came from, what, what have been there before to do these kind of things. I wanted to take three examples today. I wanted to talk about how to make a design in tables, which was the early, say, 90s way of making structured designs. And then I'm going to talk about a flex grid or a flex example and how you build designs in flex and uh, then I'm going to talk about grid and uh, the thing where that we need to look here at here is not actually the exact code implementation uh, I guess that we have uh, that I have done a lot of errors and some of these things could be done better so some of the critiques of the earlier methods might not apply, but I think they are good to illustrate the problem at least. Uh, so if we look at the first design here, we have a table grid. We have some gaming things where we have some statistics over here. We have some gaming uh, matches over here. We have the nice title, our gaming control and this 3D board that we are playing through and I wanted to make it a grid where I had the title up here I had some information here and then I wanted these two lines to be uh, aligned and then I wanted something down here and my controller and as you see we have a little bit of a problem here they don't really align uh, they are a little bit out of whack Maybe there is a better way to do this that we can get them in the right order. But as it is at the moment, they are not as we want them. Um, and we, if we look at flex, we get the same problem here. Uh, we have the same kind of controls and, uh, and so on. And if we look at the CSS grid, we have a perfect grid here. And we have all the elements. And if we look at the... Uh, the way it flows if we actually make it larger and uh, smaller it actually flows quite nice in in the table view we see that these bump around a bit if we look at the flex view they also bump around a bit but they can flex quite nicely uh, if we had some media queries we could even get them to be even tighter but if we look at the flex grid here we see that it actually has some more logic to it that this first here is the most expandable and then these will change later. So we, we will look into how the, these different code examples are implemented. So if we go into code here, we can see at the table layout, this is actually how you had to do it in the 90s. You had to, when you created a table that you wanted to lay out something, you had to tell it that you didn't want any border. And this was a property that you, I'm, I'm not sure if you had to put it on the table, but most people did. And uh, this border property is not the same border property that we are used to today, that you actually have a border around an element. You had different values that you can say that I want a border around the whole element uh, or I wanted a border around different cells and, and so on. So it had a bit more logic to it, which was strange because it, it explained it was very difficult to get this value right. You, know, you have to look it up every time because I didn't know how it worked. Then you had the cell padding and cell spacing and these had a value. So you had you got some spacing and some padding and those were never right and you had to change them every time. So you set these to zero just to get everything aligned else you would have this little strip of white between your cells. And that's not what you want. 
So when you lay out, you had to set these. And then many times you put the width and height on the table as well. So in my example here, I have actually created some row. I put a table uh, column in that row. And then I put a table inside of that column. So I get the right column. And I defined some percentages here. So the header should be 10%. The text style should be 65%. And then the, uh, no, the uh, kind of statistics. And the score down here should be 25%. And then later on here we have the board at 75 and the controller at 25. So those should align them somewhat right, but not really. Um, so this is quite a lot of HTML to write. I have some styling and you could put more of these element specific things into styles if you like. But I think that will still be quite verbose for what you wanted to accomplish. So if we go uh, over to the next example here, we look at the flex grid. So here down in this, I have an outer container which is the whole page, so to say. And then I have an info container, that's the column at the left hand side. And I have a player container, that's the column at the right hand side. I have my board and controls in the player container. I have score, stats and title in the other, the left side container. And then I put some information down here. I tell the HTML body and so on that I don't want any margin and padding. Always remove those if you want it to go to the edges of the screen. I also want it to be full height and that's something that you need to tell the HTML and body to be full height. Otherwise if you have some element inside of it where you use percentages you won't get the right height because the body will not span all the way down so you need to put view height on your element your body element and then the outer element has a height and a width of uh, 102 and we have a flex direction of row so they will be uh, aligned in a row so i will put the info container and play container uh, beside sides of uh, each other and then i say that the info container has three of the 12 um spaces that you have in in this flex so you have 12 spaces in a in a flex container and three of them should be this info container and nine of them should be the other container the play container and this specific container should also flex and these should flex in column wise and then i put my title score and stats i give the title one flex the score three flex and stats eight flex and then we have some more styling here which is not important for this case and then we have the board i gave nine flex and the controls three flex and, and one weird thing here is that when i tell it that my image i want the image to be 100 percent it actually will push the flex boundary a bit so it actually will push out the flex element and they will align even worse. So I changed the image size to 96%, which is better, but still not good. So if you can't really get all these elements to um, align and actually snap to a grid, you have to do some weird strange maneuvering to actually get them to align and, and look nice. So, so that's how I implemented this uh, flex uh, way of aligning my grid. And both this table and flex could have done be done better if I put some more energy into it and uh, maybe you could get them to align perfectly and, and so on. But I think that it's still more job to do it than to actually use the grid. So let's go to the grid example, which is very exciting. Um, here, I actually just say that I want a grid. 
and that I want some elements in my grid. I don't have any other structure in this document. I just have some divs that I tell are the different grid components. And then in my uh, main grid container, I say that I want to display grid. And then I define my grid here. So I have a grid template of columns. And the thing at the top should be automated. So it uh, should have an automated height. And then uh, the part in the bottom should be one FR. So that's a specific uh, one uh, height. So you, you, you give it a specific height of one frame or so. Um, and then I, when I have my grid rows, uh, I tell it to be auto in the first element. Then now I have one frame in the middle and auto in the last. And I give it an height and a width. And then when I come down here, I can say that in my first column and my first row, I want to put the title. Pretty easy. And the score should be in column one, row three. So here they are defined in the wrong order. So I say that the title should be at the top, the score should be at the bottom, and the stats should be in the middle. So that's how I define where the different things should be positioned. And then I say that my grid column two should have a board in it, and it should start at um, grid position on the row at one, and then it should spawn two rows. So it should actually take two of these um, positions, both top and middle, and spawn over those two. And then lastly, I say that this control should be in column two and the last position, position three. So that's everything I need to do in order to make this grid in the same way that I defined it at the table and in the uh, flex position. And, and this is much simpler way to define a grid, I think. There are a lot more power to this and you can do a lot more. Uh, you could actually give your grid some names if you want. So you have a lot of flexibility how you set up this grid and get your specific layout result. And if you can use grids together with some flow, flex flow, and perhaps use tables for where they were intended to be used, you have a lot of different tools in your tool chain. So uh, that was what I wanted to talk about today. I think uh, this flex grid is something that I will uh, use a lot uh, when I lay out my pages and when I want a more uh, statically aligned layout um, that could actually flex, uh, which sounds a bit strange, but so uh, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any suggestions how to in improve uh, either the table layout or the flex, then please tell me. It's always interesting to uh, hear different ideas and different ways to do things. You can always learn from uh, these examples. These examples will be on GitHub as well. I call this... Uh, CSS grid dash example on uh, my GitHub, so you can find it there. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.